All right, everyone, welcome to the video where we're going to be talking about midpoints, um, different ways to calculate them, and then we're going to talk about how this ties into finding equations of perpendicular bisectors. So recall that a midpoint um, splits a segment into two congruent parts. So we've dealt with midpoint a lot um, outside of a coordinate grid, um, but now we're going to apply this knowledge on a coordinate grid. So Midpoint, uh, just some notation, it's denoted by an uppercase M. So don't confuse this with the lowercase M that's used for slope. That's why it's really important um, when you're writing your variables that you're using the correct form of them, whether it's uppercase or lowercase, because sometimes the same letter is used for different things. So when you're calculating the midpoint of a segment, you're going to need to have both endpoints. So you need at least two endpoints to calculate that midpoint. Now your endpoints are usually denoted um, as x1, y1, and x2, y2. Now this is also similar to slope, um, because when you guys are calculating the slope, we tell you guys to label your points as x1, y1, and x2, y2. So it's kind of the same idea, um, but um, what we're going to do here is, to calculate the midpoint, we need an x-coordinate, and a y-coordinate. So to find the x-coordinate of your midpoint, what you need to do um, is take your x-values of your endpoints, you add them up, and then you divide by 2 to find that distance that is exactly halfway in between. Now it's the same concept for the y-coordinate of your midpoint. To find your y-coordinate of your midpoint, you take your y-coordinates of both of your endpoints, you add them up, and then you divide by 2 to find exactly halfway between them. So your endpoint, or sorry, your midpoint in general, um, is usually going to be denoted by M, just capital M, and then you will have an x-coordinate um, and a y-coordinate that you are throwing in there. So we're going to be dealing with a few different examples, um, and I'm, we're going to talk about uh, solving for the midpoint algebraically using these formulas and um, graphically as well. So um, in this question, we're graphically and algebraically going to find the midpoint between these two points below. So to find your midpoint, you need your endpoints. So our endpoints right now are 1, 3 and 5, 3. So right away, before we even do anything, I'm going to just label, um, just like we do for slope, x1, y1, x2, y2 because um, this kind of helps us get a better idea of what's going on. Now, graphically, you could just count your boxes, right? You know your midpoint needs to um, split your segment exactly in half. So that looks like it's going to be this point right here, and I can actually justify this. There are two boxes on the left of that point and two boxes on the right of that point to get to our endpoint. So I know my midpoint, capital M, um, should be 3, 3. Now, let's see if this holds up algebraically. So for algebraically, let's do our x-coordinate first. Um, so to find our x-coordinate of our midpoint, we need to take our x1 and x2, we add them up, and then we divide by 2. So our x1 is 1, plus our x2, which is 5. Dividing that by 2, we'll get 6 over 2, which is 3. So I know that my x-coordinate of my midpoint is going to be 3. For my y-coordinate of my midpoint, i got to take my y-coordinates, add them up, and divide by 2. Um, so my y-coordinate, my y1, is 3. My y2 is also 3, and then we're dividing that by 2. Again, that's going to be 6 over 2, and we get that our y-coordinate of our midpoint is 3. Now, putting it all together, your midpoint, your x-coordinate is 3, and your y-coordinate is also 3. So you should see we get the same value when we do this um, algebraically and graphically as well. Um, a big piece to understand as well, though, is that your x1 and y1, if you're using these formulas, um, and your x2 and y2, they have to be coordinates of your endpoint. Endpoints. If they are not, then this formula will give you an incorrect answer. So here's another example where we have some different um, coordinates here. Now we have some negative numbers involved, but the concepts are going to stay the same. So let's label we have x1, y1, and x2, y2. Um, and let's graphically first find the midpoint. So if I count the boxes, it looks like it's going to be around here because uh, we have three boxes on the left three boxes on the right, so my midpoint, that coordinate is 2, comma, negative 2. Now let's see if this holds up algebraically. So first, let's find our x-coordinate of our midpoint, where we need to add up our x-values of our endpoint and divide by 2. So our x1 is negative 1, and then we're going to add our x2, which is 5, and then we're going to divide by 2. That gives us 4 over 2, which simplifies to 2. So I know my x-coordinate of my midpoint is 2. 
Now for our y coordinate, we take y1, which is negative 2, and we need to add our y2, which is also negative 2. So be careful with your signs here. Um, so we have negative 2 plus negative 2. Now that's just going to simplify to negative 2 um, minus 2 divided by 2. And if we do that, we get negative 4 over 2, which simplifies to negative 2. So now I know my y coordinate of my midpoint is negative 2. Now putting that all together, our midpoint is 2 comma negative 2. So again, we get the same exact values here um, for our midpoints when we do it algebraically and graphically. Um, just be mindful of our signs. So we had this little complex part going on over here where we had that plus negative 2. So just go slow. Um, and you can use your calculator to always double check yourself as well. Now this third example is going to be a little bit different. Um, so here, we're going to be algebraically and graphically solving for the endpoint. So here, in the other two examples, we were given both endpoints. So we were able to label x1, y1, and x2, y2. However, here, we're only given one endpoint. So this x, this um, 3, 1, that's our x1, y1. But now, this midpoint which is 2 comma 1 if you look at the graph. Um, that's not x2, y2 anymore. So what you need to do here is break this down. So this is actually mx and this is my, right? This is the x coordinate of our midpoint over here. This is the y coordinate of our midpoint. So we're actually going to do this one at a time, just like we have been breaking up finding the x coordinate and the y coordinate of our midpoint. We're going to do the same thing, but now we're just substituting in different values. So here, um, prior in the last two examples, we were substituting in x1 and x2, and then we were able to find mx, right, which was our x coordinate of the midpoint. But now we actually have the x coordinate of our midpoint. So that x coordinate of our midpoint is 2 equals, now we have x1, which is negative 3, but we don't have our x2 yet. We don't have the x coordinate of our other midpoint. So that's actually what we're going to have to solve for. Now, you guys know that when we have a fraction, um, we got to multiply by that denominator on both sides to get rid of it. So we're going to get 4 equals. This is going to simplify out. We get negative 3 plus x2. And if we add 3 on both sides and add 3 on both sides, we get 7 equals x2. Now what this stands for is this is the x coordinate of the other endpoint. Okay, now we have to do the same thing um, with for our y coordinate. So we actually have our y coordinate of our midpoint, right? Our y coordinate of our midpoint is 1 equals, now we have our y1 value which is 1, but we don't have y2, um, so we're going to have to solve for that. Now same thing, we have a fraction, um, so we're going to multiply by that denominator to get um, rid of it. So what's going to happen is here we're going to have 2 equals, this simplifies out, we have 1 plus y2, then we subtract 1 on both sides to get 1 equals y2, and again what this stands for is this is the y coordinate of other endpoint. So putting it all together, um, the other endpoint um, is going to be 7 comma 1. Now I cut this graph off by accident, um, but 7 comma 1 would be somewhere over here. So if you actually counted it, um, you would have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 boxes on the left, and you would have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 boxes on the right. So graphically, um, that would hold up as well. So again, you need to just remember what these little variables stand for, um, and that is going to help you immensely when you're substituting into these formulas, okay? Now, the last thing we're going to go over before the video ends is just some prior knowledge um, of perpendicular slopes and creating equations of lines. So remember, um, if you want to create a line that is perpendicular to a given line, the slopes need to be negative reciprocals of each other. So for negative reciprocal, you need to flip your fraction, right? Um, and then you need to change the sign of it. And then um, creating equations of lines, you always need your slope, right? So finding your slope might be different depending on the information you have. You might be able to graphically find it. Um, you might be able to use slope formula if you're given two points. Or you might be able to manipulate your equation, get it into y equals, and then look at the term connected to the x value to find your slope. Um, and then you also need your y-intercept as well. 
So we're going to be connecting midpoints um, to creating equations of perpendicular bisectors in class. Um, so just keep these ideas in your head um, so that we can connect these ideas uh, tomorrow.